What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be installing a new exhaust on the Miata, but rather than just slapping on a high performance, super cool race car exhaust, we're gonna do some testing along with it as well to see if that exhaust that we install really makes a horsepower difference or if it's just a noise and a butt dyno improvement. So what we're gonna be doing on the Miata is we're gonna be replacing the factory exhaust from just before the catalytic converter all the way back to the tailpipe. We're gonna take it to the dyno, dyno it with the new exhaust, and then put the old exhaust back on and dyno it again. That may seem like an awful lot of exhaust swapping to dyno the car. However, I wanna make sure that if we run into any trouble with broken bolts or stuck fasteners, we run into that problem here, not while we're at the dyno. While I don't expect really a big horsepower improvement on this new exhaust, there's a couple of areas where I think we actually might gain a little. We're gonna be going from a two inch factory exhaust up to a two and a half inch aftermarket exhaust. So that alone should allow more airflow. The place where I think we're gonna see the biggest improvement is the factory exhaust is just kind of crush bent. The aftermarket exhaust is mandrel bent, which means that we're keeping that same interior diameter around the bend. When an exhaust is not mandrel bent, those crushes not only weaken the metal, but they can disrupt airflow. Based on that alone and a bigger diameter exhaust, we should see a considerable improvement in airflow. There's a couple of other areas where I think we might actually see an improvement. We may see a reduction in weight on the aftermarket exhaust. Typically an aftermarket exhaust does weigh less than the factory one. Also, this car has 160,000 miles and it appears to have the original catalytic converter. Over time, the catalytic converters can get a little bit clogged, not enough to trip a check engine light, but putting a new catalytic converter on it, even one that's not a performance cat, can improve our airflow. The biggest place where I think this car is gonna see an improvement Improvement is where a repair was made. As you can see on our factory muffler, we have a repair that was made in this curved section right here. Typically there is a flange like our aftermarket exhaust has. This aftermarket muffler was meant to bolt straight to the rest of the factory exhaust. We can see the crush in the bend here on our curved piece. Let's go ahead and get our exhaust on, see how it sounds, and then it's time for a trip to the dyno. Also, big thanks to WD-40 for sponsoring this video. We're gonna be using the classic WD-40 in the blue and yellow can, and we're gonna be using WD-40 Specialist Penetrant for our exhaust bolts. I like that both of these cans have the flexi straw, so when you put the little red straw in and hit the trigger, you don't have to go chasing it down after it shoots out of the end of the nozzle. Now when we're installing a bolt-on exhaust system like this, usually you can do that with just simple basic hand tools. Depending on which section you're replacing, you may or may not need an oxygen sensor wrench. There are a few different styles. For most of my career, I've had the best luck simply using an open-end wrench. It really kind of depends on the oxygen sensor placement. Two tools that you may not have that I think are well worth adding to your toolbox are an exhaust cutter like this one. This works really well for smaller spaces and an exhaust hanger removal tool. This is a tool that I used to think, I don't need this thing, I can just take the hangers off no problem. However, after having one, it has become such an important part of doing exhaust work. Highly recommend getting both of these. Of course, we're gonna need some gloves, definitely safety glasses here because we're gonna be working overhead. Also not a bad idea to use a very little anti-seize on the bolts that hold our exhaust together. Really, the first thing that I like to do before taking anything off or getting started on the exhaust is go ahead and hit all the fasteners with our rust penetrant. This is gonna give the penetrant some time to soak in and really let it do its job. When I'm dealing with a fastener that's extremely rusted, I'll usually let it soak in as long as I possibly can even overnight. Also, consider introducing a little bit of heat. Also, quick tip, throw some cardboard underneath where you're working, and that'll capture the fluid that drips off our exhaust. All right, while our penetrant is penetranting, let's look at the exhaust that we're going to install. We have three different sections that we're gonna be putting on the Miata. This is actually two different kits, one that's just the muffler, and then one that's the mid pipe and the catalytic converter. Something else you may wanna look at while you're preparing to install an exhaust on your car is what do your exhaust hangers look like? When a car has higher mileage, those hangers can wear out and actually cause your exhaust to hang a little bit lower or move a little bit more than it should. Typically, replacing the hangers are pretty inexpensive. Now, I'm gonna be swapping this exhaust a couple of times for our dyno runs, so I think when we do the final exhaust installation, I'll go ahead and throw a couple of new hangers on. One other thing I usually like to do is I like to wrap the exhaust tips in something so that the new fancy cool tips don't get all messed up while we're doing our installation. So normally there's a connection right here and what we would do is we'd unbolt it, we'd take our muffler assembly off towards the back of the car, 
Then we would take this section, unbolt it at the front, and take that stuff forward, and we could just easily, super easily, take our exhaust system off. However, because it looks like this piece was welded in, uh, we're not gonna be able to do that. So we have a decision to make. We can take off this bracket right here, which actually runs up towards the front of the vehicle. It looks like six bolts. We can get this out of the way and drop our exhaust straight down. Our other option is to cut it. Which one's the right choice? Well, it kind of depends on what we're gonna do with the exhaust when we're done. If this exhaust was just going to scrap, well, it may be better to just take a reciprocating saw, cut it, and be done and not have to mess with any of these bolts. Because we're actually gonna be putting this back on in order to do our stock exhaust dyno testing, whatever we do, we have to be able to bolt it all back up. That means we're taking it all out as one piece, or if we cut it, we need to cut it smart. We can't just hack it apart right here. Well, we could, but then we're definitely gonna have to weld it back together. So what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for a place through this exhaust with a few inches of straight piping so that if we cut it, we can put a clamp on it and seal the exhaust back up. This spot right here looks like the perfect place in order to cut it, and we have enough clearance that we can either weld it back together or we can put a nice clamp on it to hold the exhaust. And that'll allow us to really easily remove the muffler. We also want to avoid cutting it on any curved piece or too close to any connection, not because we can't weld it back together, because then that becomes our only option. And I like to give myself the flexibility to throw a clamp on it or weld it. All right, so we are going to cut, and we are gonna cut right about there. You can see there's this section of exhaust where it's bent, where the exhaust actually dips in a little bit. So we're gonna cut it center of that. We will take our exhaust cutter tool, we'll loop it over the exhaust. Make sure you're in the right spot because you really only get one shot at cutting it. We're dialed in, now all we do, rotate back and forth while we squeeze the handle and cut that exhaust. There we go. Let's go ahead and work on getting our rear muffler section off. The very first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hit it with some WD-40. That's just gonna get us a little bit of lubricant on our hangers and make popping these hangers off quite a bit easier. We'll take our tool and we'll start removing the hangers. For the hangers, I like to start with the hardest one to get to first. That way, if you have to juggle the weight of the muffler a little bit, you're not juggling the weight of the muffler all while trying to get on the hard to reach hanger. If you don't have a second set of hands, maybe worth bungeeing the muffler up so that one side isn't totally hanging or leave that side's hanger on just a little bit so it supports that one side while you take the other side off. Let's go ahead and take that final hanger off. Then we'll just pop off that section that we kind of left half hung on. And now we can nurse our muffler out or bang it. Before we move to that front exhaust section, we gotta get that downstream oxygen sensor unplugged. Typically, the oxygen sensor is plugged in pretty close to where it installs into the exhaust, and it's really not any different in this case either. However, this one goes through the body and the connector is in the passenger compartment. It's actually located right near the right rear bolt for the seat. You don't need to take the seat out in order to access and unplug and replug that connector. However, it'll make it a little bit easier, so I just went ahead and took the seat out. We also have a bracket for the oxygen sensor harness that we need to remove. Let's go ahead and unbolt the front section near the catalytic converter. I like to use an impact tool here, but the key is you don't wanna just go full send on these bolts or these nuts. You really wanna have good trigger control while you're taking these loose, so short bursts tend to work much better then just full on send it. Once all your bolts are loose, slide our exhaust back, down, and then we can pull it away from the car. Now while we have everything out, let's go ahead and take our weight measurements. Our aftermarket setup is three different sections. The muffler weighs 17.4 pounds, the catalytic converter section weighs 8.4 pounds, and the mid pipe weighs 8.2 pounds, coming in right at 34 pounds. Our factory muffler section weighs 23.2 pounds, and our mid pipe and catalytic converter section from the factory weighs 16 pounds for a total of 39.2 pounds. That's a weight savings of roughly five pounds, and we'll talk about the significance of that at the end of the video. Before we install our new exhaust, we wanna make sure that the mating surface where we're going to our old downpipe and header section is clean so our gasket will seal properly. We'll remove our old gasket. 
We'll just take a little scotch bright and clean that up a bit. You really wanna make sure you get any old gasket material off of here. If it's really bad, go ahead and take a wire brush or a wire wheel and use that to get it clean. Once you got that pretty well cleaned off, let's go ahead and slide our new gasket into place. You wanna make sure that your new gasket doesn't do something like slip down out of the little groove there. You wanna make sure it's all the way seated in place before tightening down that next exhaust section. Before we put our new cat section on, we need to swap our oxygen sensor from our old exhaust to our new exhaust. There's a couple of different styles of oxygen sensor sockets that you can use. There's this short open style that fits over like that. There's this kind of more enclosed style that fits over this way. My favorite way though, is to just grab an open end wrench and get on it that way. This works really well when the exhaust is out of the car and space isn't the big limiting factor. However, sometimes a big giant open end wrench doesn't fit where you need to go. So use what you have or whatever works best for that situation. Removing the oxygen sensor is usually easiest when it's clamped into a vise. Now, because we're gonna be doing some testing with our old exhaust, we are gonna install this O2 sensor plug in it. Having our downstream oxygen sensor disconnected shouldn't really impact the horsepower of our vehicle. This oxygen sensor plug came with our kit. Put a little bit of anti-seize on there just to make it easier if we ever have to take it back out. Next up, let's get the exhaust installed in the car. I actually think it's gonna be easier to assemble these two pieces and then install it in the car. So we'll go ahead and put our clamp on. We'll slide our catalytic converter section into our mid pipe section. Now we'll take the whole assembly and install it in the car. And we're gonna just loosely install it. Once the whole system is in, we'll come back and tighten it up, make sure that our alignment of our new exhaust is correct. Let's go ahead and get our first exhaust section installed. This is where we wanna make sure we get our gasket placement correct. I'm gonna start by hooking the rear section up over this crossbar. That way it'll be supported while I work on the front section. I'm gonna actually bungee cord the front section up to hold it in place while I bolt it down. This is where we wanna make sure we get our gasket placement correct. Now it's up to you whether you wanna put anti-seize on these bolts or not. If you're going to, remember you don't need a lot. Just a little bit goes a long way. We're just gonna get these hand tight. Next, let's get our exhaust in the hanger. If it's being stubborn, a little WD-40 action, and it should slide right in. Next up, let's get this rear muffler section in. We have three hangers that hold this one on, and it's gonna bolt to our mid pipe. Let's go ahead and pre-lubricate our hangers here. All right, there we go. Next, let's get this rear section bolted up to our mid pipe. First, we will drop our gasket in. If you have the type of gasket like this that doesn't have any sort of retention piece to hold it in place, take a tiny bit of super glue and super glue the gasket on. I don't really recommend doing this for just about any other gasket, but on the exhaust, it's gonna be totally fine. Also, if you're having trouble holding the exhaust in a certain position and then needing to start a bolt, Take a small scrap block of wood and use that to hold the exhaust. That works really well if you don't have an extra set of hands. Get our bottom bolt started, get our top bolt started. Make sure that your gasket is in all the way and properly seated in those channels. Once you have everything lined up and set, we'll go ahead and snug the rear down pretty much all the way since this is basically fixed and that'll allow us to adjust our mid pipe a little bit easier. Next, let's go ahead and tighten up our catalytic converter section. Double check your gasket and make sure it's still in the right place. For the mid section, really, the alignment looks pretty good all through the exhaust. We just need to tighten down our clamp. Now, I initially installed this clamp thinking it would go over here on this side. I think that's gonna be a little too close to the body. Because we're gonna take it back off and put it back on again, I think when we put it back on, I'll have the clamp bolt housing over on this side. For now, since this is just temporary, we're gonna put it right like this. Next, let's put our wiring harness for our oxygen sensor back through the body of the car, and we'll go ahead and lock that bracket down. Something I like to do when I'm done installing a new exhaust is a really quick leak check. Normally, you would wanna get the exhaust hot, and then let it cool and then do it after that. But either way, the process is basically the same. We're gonna take a scrap block of wood and we're gonna take a rag. We're gonna take our block of wood, 
wrap the rag around the block of wood, start the car up, and you're just gonna hold this over the exhaust for just a second or two at a time. Let it off, hold it, let it off. That's gonna really increase the back pressure inside the exhaust system and expose any leaks in any of our connections. What you don't wanna do is just hold it on there for like three minutes, you're going to cause a problem. Just hold it on there for a second or two, you'll actually hear the back pressure increasing. You'll either hear a leak or you won't hear a leak and then move your block and let the exhaust gas freely come out. You also wanna make sure you don't stick your face in there or anything goofy like that because you don't wanna breathe this nasty stuff coming out and make sure you're doing it in a well-ventilated environment. Now that we have that exhaust fully installed, we know it's leak free, let's check out what it sounds like. Next, it's time to head over to the dyno and see if we get any true performance gains out of this system. I brought the Miata back to the same place that I had the Golf R dynoed, Everything Euro and Reflex Tuning in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We did a total of four runs on the dyno with the car. The first two runs were with the performance exhaust. Then while the car cooled down a little bit, I went ahead and swapped the factory exhaust back onto the car and we did two more runs. I was actually pretty surprised and kind of happy with the results that we got. I love that the readings were consistent and the cars actually retained almost all of its factory horsepower, even being over 20 years old and having 160,000 miles. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our data from our dyno runs, but something feels a little off. All right, that's better. Now, our stock vehicle has a curb weight of 2,299 pounds. Our stock horsepower without the aftermarket exhaust dynoed at 108.68 horsepower to the rear wheels. Our torque reading was 103.31 to the rear wheels. That gives us a power to weight ratio of a whopping 0 0.047 horsepower for every pound of the vehicle. When we installed the performance exhaust, we lost five pounds. So we have a weight of 2,294 pounds. Our horsepower to the rear wheels was 112.09. So we actually gained 3.41 horsepower. We had a torque reading of 104.53. So that is an increase of 1.22 pound feet of torque. And that bumped our horsepower to weight ratio up just a tiny bit. Let's look at our total change to figure out what we actually gained we take the change which is 3.41 horsepower divided by the original horsepower of 108.68 multiply it by 100 to get a 3.13 percent increase in horsepower by changing that exhaust now we only have a 110 roughly horsepower car so we didn't see a huge actual number in change however if this were say a 300 horsepower car, we would see over a nine horsepower gain on just changing the exhaust. And that's actually pretty decent. Here's the kicker though. That exhaust system costs about 600 bucks, 602.98 to be exact. When we take that number and figure out how much it costs per horsepower, we're at $176.82 per horsepower, which is a whole lot of money just for one horsepower. For contrast, the Golf R from stock to stage two cost about $51.16 per horsepower. That's quite a bit difference in price. And we had a power to weight ratio on stage two 
of 0.102 horsepower for every pound of the vehicle. Now that's quite a bit heavier of a vehicle, but it's also quite a bit more powerful. And here's me happily driving the Miata. So overall, we did see an increase in horsepower, 3.41 horsepower and 1.22 pound feet of torque. This is a pretty low horsepower car. So to see a 3% increase on just the exhaust, I don't think is really all that bad. We also lost five pounds and we get that extra noise. I think the exhaust doesn't sound too terribly bad, especially for a small four cylinder engine. Also keep in mind, this is just one car with one style of exhaust. Your mileage may vary, or I should say your horsepower may vary. So my question to you, have you installed an exhaust on your car and do you have before and after horsepower and readings? on an actual dyno, or is this just an ear and butt dyno improvement? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. All right, with that, I am out. Big ups to my man, Jason from Engineering Explained. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again next time.